Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Palmetto Cats Live. Tonight, we're going to continue in this series that I've started almost a month ago now and talking about uh, basically how to catfish and how to do it, what gear to use. Uh, and so tonight, we're talking about things that I, uh, stuff that I know very little about. So I'm going to completely depend on my guests tonight. So I'm totally exposed. And uh, I know, however, that the guests that I have coming in will provide those of you who are looking for techniques, gear, how to's, uh, best practices for bank fishing will get a lot of answers from. So uh, please ask a lot of questions tonight. Bank fishing is something that everyone can access. Uh, you don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to have a boat, obviously. The only thing that's required is you have a rod and a access to water and access to water. That's about it. And bait, of course. But uh, that's all going to be talked about tonight. We're going to talk about uh, bank fishing and equipment that goes along with it, techniques, what to look for. Um, we had uh, we have a bunch of guests lined up tonight. Uh, we've had a couple drop out, but you know I'm completely confident in the people that are coming on are going to do a great job, and I'm seriously looking forward to it. Um, in the house tonight, we have. Catfishing Katie Collins, who is also a member of the Boom Squad. And I just want to send a shout out to my Boom Squad members. Catfishing Katie Collins. We got Val Lane, Ray Smith, Cool Cats, Country Living, Fishing with Big Mike, and Catfishing Pappy. Thank you all for your memberships to my channel. I hope you're enjoying the extra content that I'm giving you. Uh, soon we're going to do a members only live stream. So be looking out if you're a member. Be looking out in the community section for special links and discounts and things like that for members only. So check that out uh, to my Boom Squad members, all six of you. Um, to everyone else, welcome. Maurice Kaysen, Ace Catfishing, Mike Turner, Lynn Leeper, Catfishing Crappy, uh, Mo Creek Fishing, One Ton, Creole. Uh, I saw Mike Irvin in here, Great Outdoors Exploring. A uh, couple crosses fishing, muskrat. I hope you're feeling better, man. Uh, Tirador Arco. Uh, oh, wow. We already got a super chat. Holy cow. Outdoor, outside with the haze. Richard uh, Jarzinka. <laughs> hope I said that right. Bumping Mike Greenwell's in the house. Ray Smith fishing with Dutch Ad. Uh, Ray Kirkendall, Ricky's Creations, Robert James, Catfish Weekly. I always enjoy the support from Lyle. Thank you so much. Uh, Ace, Kentucky Big Cats and Bourbon. Holy cow, we got a whole bunch of people in here. We got 67 people in here already. If I missed you, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. I need to see who did that super chat. It was Robert James. Man, already, thank you. I haven't even done anything yet. Thank you so much for your support, Robert James. That's awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, y'all don't know how much that means. It really helps support the channel and kind of offsets, man, Mike, y'all, I got to get started with the show. <laughs> Thank you, Mike Turner. All right. But it, it, it will eventually offset the, the cost of doing YouTube and, uh, everything that I, that I usually put in from our own bank account will go, will come from YouTube profits. So it helps out. New cameras, uh, new lights. I got to get a new light again. Uh, things like this board back here. So thank you all so much. Uh, uh, there's a lady named Rebecca. I think it's um, Mud Mud Girl or something like that. Y'all helped me out with her name. She was in my live stream yesterday fishing and she donated $80. And I can't believe that we have people like that. Chunky Cats was in there and Mike Turner. So thank you all to all of you who do that. Uh, I don't look for that, but it's always nice to have it. And I just enjoy that I have 78 people that want to come in here and talk to us. What's up, Weekend Angler, Rex Blocker, Eric Burnside, Finn Seeker TV. Man, we got a whole bunch of people. Mud Tramp, thank you. Mud Tramp, uh, fantastic lady. All right, let's get cranking. We have several guests coming in tonight. Please have your questions ready. I know there are a lot more bank fishermen 
uh, that watch. There's Chunky. He'll be on later. Joseph Cena Fishing, new name. Welcome. Uh, Chesapeake Bay, Ryan Bones, Lynn Lieber. All right, let's get cranked up. First, I got Mr. Josh from One Ton Catfishing. He's sitting outside so he can show you how some things work. Let's get him in here. Hey, Sampy, Stephen Corley, Paw Paw, Ed. All right. How you doing, Uncle Josh? You doing all right? Doing good. How y'all doing? Doing good, man. So we're talking about bank fishing tonight, and I know you and your fellas, y'all do a lot of bank fishing exclusively, really, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, tell us what, what you use. Okay. Well, um, we we use a mix of rods. So I know we've, we've kind of talked about rods before on here. Uh, we've got a, you know, a few different types that we use, so I don't... I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about those, but it depends on where we're fishing. Sometimes we'll use, uh, like, we're here, where I am right now at the river. Um, I'll use kind of my shorter rods because I don't really have to cast that far. Because I'm, I'm typically going to keep closer to the bank. Uh, right. Because it, you know, I find I catch a lot more of the fish in high-flowing rivers. Uh, if we're at the lake, though, we're going to go for a 10- or 12-foot rod where I can get to the deeper water. So, yeah, tell people about why you choose longer rods for, for bank fishing. Oh, yeah. Well, the main thing for me is the distance I can cast. Um, I've got a couple of my rods I can cast well over 100 yards. And they're, you know, with ease without having to worry about a backlash. I could probably go further, but there's, you know, there's a <laughs> I'm going to screw it up. So um, All right. So longer rods you can cast farther with, basically. Yeah, definitely. Uh, sometimes too, uh, for me, I find that with the, the longer rods that have a little bit more action, um, I'm able to fight the bigger fish a little bit more because the, the rod giving some bend beyond what my line can allow. Gotcha. So the combination of the two just makes it a little bit easier for me. All right. Yep. And, um, bait wise, uh, it, it's really going to vary. And the river, like this river I'm at right here, this is um, this is the Dan River in Virginia, and this thing flows. I mean, it you don't want to get a lot of current, huh? Yeah, I've fallen in twice, and trust me, you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not exactly graceful, and I usually tend to fall asleep on the mm -hmm. bank if I fish by myself, so gotcha. that doesn't work out too good sometimes. But <laughs> uh, I'm going to throw out probably eight or nine ounces here. Eight or nine ounce weight. Okay, so high current. So what kind of weights are you using? Um, here I'm going to do no rolls. No usually. rolls? Yeah, that, that's mostly what we use. I do have some because we started making our own, just make it a lot easier and cheaper. Um, gotcha. Um, but we also have some large egg sinkers. I think we go up okay. to ounces on those. So I, I've had one time after a flood here and the water was really pumping, I had 16 ounces on it. Uh, and it still moved. <laughs> it was it was no good. <laughs> what about uh, your headlamp? Yep. Um, so this headlamp is it's twelve hundred lumens. Um, I, the brand I actually just went and looked it up on Amazon. Unfortunately, it's not available anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's rechargeable and it's got a couple different lights. I'm actually going to get up and show y'all. Um, yeah. I've got and DMV has one similar to that. I was hoping he would be able to come on tonight, um, and, and show us. Oh man, um, so for my headlight, I want to turn off my spotlight for a second so you guys gotcha. can see him from pure blackness. All right, can you see anything? No, yet, right? total black. So, this is uh, I don't know if you can see out here it's kind of hard with this camera to be able to tell let me move you how about now yeah we can see, see. Bank at all yeah okay so this is a pretty steep bank here so this light i mean i can shine our entire area and as a matter of fact when um when we're videotaping instead of just doing live when one of us catches a fish like, if Art's catching one, I'll turn this light on, on this setting right here. And that's how yeah. we're able to see um, on camera. But it has a couple different modes. I can also go to, a, like, a spotlight mode. Right. I don't know if you guys can pick that up. But that's the other side of the river. And for me, what I'm seeing is almost like daylight. 
Right. Uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't TV. translate as much on the camera, unfortunately. How about the ground? <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, we can see that pretty well. Yeah. So um, that's that's my headlamp. Of course, it's got the little emergency thing too. You can give people seizures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh i'll show you all my spotlight so this is the, the spotlight that i use it's uh See, this is the kind of stuff i'm interested in yep uh, this is a hyper tough it's tiny i mean look i've got big hands so it kind of you know it doesn't look tiny um but it it really is and uh this thing is it lasts like Oh gosh, we had them last probably five or six hours, but let me cut my. So is it that's rechargeable? Yeah, yeah, it's rechargeable. Can you see at all? <laughs> kind of hard out here. Oh yeah, yeah, I think you can. But this lights the whole area. This is what I'm actually using yeah. um, on me right so, now. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. So, and that's, I'm probably, that's nice. I'm about 10 feet from my camera right now. so No, that's really nice. That's good. It's, it's good and bright. Uh, the only other thing that I use, um, I like light. I like being able to see is this light right here. Okay. Um, this is also 1200 lumens. This is a tactical light. Right. And it's uh, LED. So it's got similar function. It's not going to be able to really see anything out here, but it's almost identical right. to you know, the, for brightness. So. Gotcha. What about your chair? What you sitting in? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fella too, and you know, I like comfort. Yeah, dude, this thing. Um, let me see. Turn a little light on here. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. So this I got off of Amazon. I'll have to get back to you with the name of it. Let's see. Onya, O N, Oniva, O N. IVA. Oniva. Okay. It says a 500 pound capacity. All right. And, um, I might exceed that just a little bit, but <laughs> hey, if you don't take risks in life, you don't win. You know. <laughs> no risk, no reward, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's yeah my wife is right. I like I like a good comfy camping chair. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and this is this really is because like. For me, I've got some problems with my knees and stuff. As I'm blinding you, sorry. <laughs> you can see how bright it was then, huh? <laughs> but I can, no hands, I can get up. Yeah, so when it's tall. That's knees, good. Yeah. And it's it's not leaning back. That's I can't stand. If I sit down, I'm like this. No. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's terrible. I can sit up in this thing and go for hours now. On the other side, I don't have it in right now, but it's got uh, clips for a built-in uh, cooler. So you can put your water in there. Cooler. Yeah. And it's cool because it comes undone, and it's almost like one of those, uh, I don't even know what you call it. My wife calls it 31. If there's any ladies on here, you know what oh, that the, is. Oh, the bags or something? Yeah. 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 So it's like that quality. It's a really good quality. So, nice. Like I had... Uh, nice. I had spilt some bait in it a couple weeks ago because mm -hmm. I didn't feel like putting it on the ground. So I just set it in the cooler and <laughs> not a good idea with old cup bait. So I took it home and I put hot soapy water and it got up the next morning. Every bit of water was still in it. So I paid like, I paid like right at 55, $56 for it. Um, but that was on sale I went on Amazon. And when I searched for big guy chairs, and found this style i searched for the condition of use and i'm telling you if y'all don't do that you're wasting money <laughs> because mm -hmm. this is a 150 dollar chair and literally the only thing wrong with it was the corner of the box was dead <laughs> gotcha <laughs> so it is, you know cool it's a great anything else you want to share with us tonight um not really just uh I'm praying for y'all if, uh, if you got anything going on health wise and especially muskrat man i'm sorry you've been going through what you've been going through yeah and god bless you. thank you for this show man it's awesome yeah well, hey man i really appreciate you taking time out of your night and sharing with us and i know everyone in here appreciate it so thank you thank y'all 
Talk God bless you, brother. All right. Oh, man, we got a new member, Mr. Ricky's Creations. Awesome. So if you don't know who Ricky's Creations is, this is the guy that goes and um, he made uh, Chunky Cat's light, or sign, and he made a, a, a custom fishing rod for him. So welcome to the Boom Squad, Ricky's Creations. Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome, welcome. All right. I think you all know this this guy pretty well. Uh, he was live uh, pretty much for most of the morning, and I, I watched him before I had to go to church. The stand man, S. Smith. What's going on, brother? Hey, good. Hello, hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? I can't complain, man. We're 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 alive and kicking, and I'm blessed. Amen. Amen. First of all, all I right. want to I want to give a VA shout out to my my uncle, my brother, Uncle Josh there. Us uh, okay. VA boys, us VA boys tend to be a little big. It seems like uh, <laughs> I don't quite break that 500 pound mark yet, but uh, I'm over the 400. So, <laughs> all right, but, uh, we got another one, Mr. Tirador Arco. Awesome, man! Welcome to the Boom Squad. Boom. <laughs> All right, what you got for us tonight, Stan? I got a couple things. Everybody knows that I I try to do. Uh, I want value. I don't I don't spend a lot of money on fishing, based on current situations, whatnot. I have to get value for what I get out of it. So, uh, same thing with uh, same thing with my uh, friend brother Josh. There, chairs. If you're a bank fisherman, especially of the larger kind, a chair is the most important tool you bring bank fishing with you. Thank you, Matt uh, Jones. I've got a couple of them that I can recommend. I wanted to have it set up and stuff, but uh, after the running around all weekend with my granddaughters and then out fishing with my son this morning, not walking very well. So uh, I'll do the best I can with it. This is uh, Ozark Trails, Walmart. Gotcha. This, is, this is an oversized mesh chair. Same thing that uh, Josh was talking about. In the handle, there's a built-in cooler. It is very awesome. Drinks. Uh, if you want to put your bait in there in a couple of bags so <laughs> <laughs> and always take it out before you leave. But uh, for 400 pound weight limit on this one, it was pretty good. I liked it, but it was still not quite what I was looking for. Gotcha. Being that little bit bigger. So I went up to the big and tall chair. Same thing. Yep. Got the two. Mm -hmm. This has two cup holders. Big. It's a big wide chair. Like I said, I'm six three, four hundred plus, and I have room on both sides. Uh, same thing with this, Josh. My knees are not good at all. I can stand up out of that chair most of the time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, you know, get it, get out, get what I need to do. This I think was twenty five dollars. It's got a six hundred pound weight limit. Six hundred pounds. And that's uh, steel. It's reinforced steel, the legs and everything. So we've been using it. I've been using it a couple months now and no issues at all with it. So for 20 something dollars, can't go wrong. Under 20 bucks, 400 pound weight limit with the coolers in it. Can't go yeah, wrong. Yeah, JR, you can, you can put that ice cream sandwich anywhere. It was freeze dried. <laughs> he's, talking, he's talking about my uh, ice cream sandwich from my last video. <laughs> So that, that's your number one tool as a bank fisherman. Yeah. Number two, the next thing you got to have is I see so many times where you see bank fishermen just lean their rod against something or uh, lay it down and whatnot. I wonder how many rods have been lost on from bank fishing from people not having rod holders. So, And if you fish in a lot of different conditions, you need multiple different rod holders. And again, same thing. I go with value. PVC, just like your regular sand spike for fishing at the beach, 45 degree angle, one in. The black schedule 40 PVC, cheap. You can get an eight foot piece. So nine you foot. made that one? Oh, yeah. Just we've had them for years. That'll now work. Do you, do you uh, bevel the end of it? Do you put something in there to roll it back? Yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not, but okay. Yes, we do. Cool. I try to keep the sharp edges off of it and. Uh, it's slightly beveled, but 
main thing is that sharp edge on the inside that you don't want cutting up your uh, handles and stuff. Right, right, right. Cool. So this is yeah. this is great. This is great for your uh, sand or mud, things like that. Uh, if you're fishing a lot of rocks and stuff, this you, this this will work. You can get it down between the rocks, and you can usually lock that right in. I wouldn't recommend you know straight sand fishing too much with this because it could pull out just from yeah, the sand. Yeah, not enough friction. Yeah. But if you get it in where you're fishing rocks, where this won't get down between the rocks, this you can wedge down in there and you can get it locked in pretty pretty tight. Where I feel pretty comfortable that I'm not going to lose money on a rod that I uh, lose a rod that I spent money on. Right. So that's a good, always good to have a few of those with you. Uh, this is something my son and I are working on. It's just a uh, same thing. It's a little bit smaller PVC pipe for the same thing. When you're fishing in tight spots on the shore where you can't get a bigger PVC in, this is about half the size of that. So it's okay. more it's more likely to get down in there and then it's bent up at the top. It also, it also uh, doubles as a really good cane for anybody that's having issues walking along the bank. And this was just, we've had a bunch of these. Uh, it's just your standard Walmart, $2, $3, whatever right. Right. rod holder for most boats. We Is do that, have I, see, I thought you had that one out today and I thought that gray part was metal when I saw it on your stream. Yeah, no, I did have it out today, but this is—I've seen them with metal, the metal yep. on the PVC. We had the PVC pipes, so that's what we're gotcha. trying to kind of prototyping it with that and see how it works. And I tell you, it's been working pretty good because it's, it does get down into the ground a lot easier than the bigger, thicker black one does. Right, and it still holds, and then it's got the angle. Plus, it's yeah, I got, like that angle. That's cool. Plus, it's got where your it'll lock your. Uh, reel in the right position instead of it just that's the only downfall with these is that your reel will just spin around in it now that only works if you got a spinning reel though right no my uh it worked for my uh it, it kept the casting? The, uh, yeah okay cool uh so that's that that to me that's number two you got to have a chair you got to have a place to store your rod or your rod holder because right otherwise especially fishing in rivers like the james uh, where you got you can catch a hundred pounder at any point. I want to make sure my pole's not going anywhere. <laughs> um, well, and I, I would also add to that, you know, your rod holder is important, but you all it's also very important to set your drag, especially when you're in a fixed true. position. Yeah. 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 Uh, another thing, it's uh not quite as important, but it's uh little just another little tip where, like I said, value. I'm all about value and getting what you this uh these tidy cat buckets for cat litter we've got a snappable lid on there we use that dry dry storage you never know if you're out on uh you know out on the banks you can put uh extra clothes in there because again temperatures are going to change uh you can put things like that you can put your snacks and whatnot in there and it's, and it's got good it's good for dry storage if it does the rain does come out you know, you can store your cell phones and right. in there. They're not going to get mm -hmm. wet. Mm -hmm. Hey, and you already answered this, but show Katie that that rod holder for the rocks. That's used for the rocks again. Uh, that orange like one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like you can get these. I mean, you can make them actually with just some steel steel rod, yeah. but two bucks. I think I think it was a dollar something at Walmart. Yeah, they're not that expensive. Okay, again, thank value. you. I'm I'm all about getting purpose for or value out of what i spend the money on and that gotcha. in the rocks will will support a big fish with the drag set uh, jbt says don't forget the toilet paper i can't i can't agree more <laughs> there you go dry storage well, everything <laughs> like that that you could need you got it in one bucket easy to carry with the handle another thing my son has it he we forgot to take it out today we left it in the truck but if you're doing uh a lot of uh flathead fishing from bank and you need live bait what we do is this has got a snappable lid you put holes through on each side and you put a rope harness on it so that way it secures the lid down and stuff you put you drill holes all through it so from the bank you just toss that out put a weight in the bottom of it there's your bank live well awesome. free free no charge no free. uh 
you know, if you want a tackle box, a bank tackle box, back a bank tackle box, you get those Plano boxes, you store them in there. There's a there's an extra chair for you. If yep, you're yep, the, yep. Uh, you know, if you're the uh, kind that could actually sit on a bucket like that, but <laughs> yeah. as double as a, so I can't. Also, uh, you know, just regular bait. It's good for that. So yep. we always have a few of those with us. Uh, next thing, I've always been more the uh, when I went night fishing. Maybe it was just from what my father always told me when I went fishing with him a little kid is that catfish don't like light. That's why you mostly went fish. We mostly went fishing for night at nighttime for them. Okay. So I didn't like having a lot of lights. We always just used a regular Coleman lantern with tin foil around half of it. Okay. So you only, you only lit up what you wanted to light up. It, it wasn't like you lit up the whole river and the whole bank. Nice. Uh, we always, it was always that, uh, it scared the catfish away, so I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know the truth behind it, but that's uh, what I always grew up. Well, if you're doing a bank show, a live bank show, or even a live video, at, a video at night, the no light doesn't really work. But uh, even for people that aren't doing YouTube, I would recommend just Circle the standard, the standard cheap little ring light. Yep, I got one right behind my computer. Yep, I've been using it for for even uh, sitting at home with the live streams. Mm -hmm. I think uh, 20 something dollars for a whole setup mm -hmm. and it's powered by the little batteries, which uh, rather than dragging out the, the Coleman lantern with the fuel, yeah. then you got to wait, wait for that glass to cool down. How many people have been burnt on the Coleman's not thinking about it and you go to grab it. And uh, right. so this is something that we switched to. Uh, even if I wasn't doing YouTube, if we just go right. out for a fun night, I'll bring this now as a light and you can control the other good thing about this. It's really easy to control the direction of where you want it to go. And you can control the uh, the settings, yeah. Set the brightness, the, the, the color. Yeah, yeah. And it's and again, value. Awesome. It's, it, it's you get your value out of it. Another Hey Stan, Stan, do you mind? Um I, I wanna I don't want you to take all the cool gadgets. <laughs> I just got um, one tip. You got one more tip. Okay, cool. Because I was gonna come back to you if you wouldn't mind sticking around. And if you think okay. of anything else, I can still come back to you. But go ahead with your last tip. Yeah, this is basically my last tip. Again, okay, I, cool. I, like, I used to like fishing in low light. Okay. So you wanted to be able to see your rods. Right. Well, the, if you got uh, the white, that's why I, I use, use a lot of white poles too. But I always have Walmart shopping bags with me. If you're fishing in low light, you just rip off a little strip of uh, bag, white bag. All you do is wrap it around the tip of the pole, out into a bow. You bow out the end, bow out the ends, and with just even a little in moonlight, you can see that. That's it that's an awesome tip. I could have used that Friday night. Yeah, and you can cast with it. It's so flimsy that the line doesn't get doesn't tangle up your line. You tie it on there tight; it'll stay there. Again. It's free. Wow. Yeah, I was using the um, GX2. I'm testing a reel out, and the GX2 has no reflection and no white part on it at all. So there was there was one rod I was using. The rod, I had Muddy River rods, and all of them either have a white tip or, you know, the blue cat's all white. Mm -hmm. um, and then my Big Cat Fever, and then I had the GX2. I could have really used that Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> awesome well hey man if you think of anything else um you know just keep that link and uh when we get towards the end just pop back in and and you know i'm this this stuff is gold and you know people people want to know yeah and look at all this this whole setup you're out catfishing for 40 bucks so there you go man <laughs> cool i'll come back to you all right thanks for your uh time all right appreciate it. thank you all right man all right, next, another familiar face. We got Mr. Norman Ferguson from Catfish Head Hunters. What's up, brother? What's up, Palmetto? What happened to uh, your sleeves, man? Hard. Huh? What happened to your sleeves? Uh, the Chad got a hold of them. I was doing the, <laughs> I was doing the Chad look on them. The oh, shirt, I thought you, uh, I thought you hooked out and just took them. <laughs> it gets hot in the shirt, and, you know, of course, you know, it's got the Catfish Head Hunters logo on it. 
Yeah. And I got her <laughs> getting hot in it, so I was like, "Well, I'm gonna do a Chad, and just hack them off." And that's what I did. The gun show. You got you, you got, got the gun show. Hey man, you got uh, permits for those? No. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate you coming in. I know you you uh you said you only had a little bit of time or or a little bit of things to show, but go ahead and show us what you got, man. All right. First thing I want to show for y'all bank fishermen, anybody that's ever getting started out or that does a lot of walking or long distance, um, this right here I bought in the beginning of the spring. Mm. This is a Rodale fishing backpack. I'm trying to get it all in the thing. Uh, the good thing about this little backpack here is it, come, it does have a pop holder or water holder. Um, when I first bought it, the description said it had two rod holders on it, but it don't. It only has one, and you can strap it in right here and make these bigger for a rod to sit on this side. Okay. Um, it's got padding back. It's got galore pockets for you to store stuff. Um, the top has a top storage on it. Um, it's got, man, it's long trips. This is a lifesaver. Not a back saver, but a lifesaver. <laughs> Uh, it's got a pretty good compartment there inside. This is waterproof. Um, and, of course, it's got another pocket here on the side, another pocket here on the bottom. Um, and the good thing, what I liked about this, they had an option where you could uh, buy the one without the, the uh, compartments for your baits or lures or whatever. And it comes with these. It comes with three of these. Um, they're pretty nice, but when I received mine, one of them was already broke. Um, I guess just from shipping, I wouldn't go worry about it because what three dollars, four dollars of plastic, no big deal. I can replace that. Um, they have held up pretty well. Um, let me show you. But that's right still now. something to consider if people are thinking about buying that. You know, make sure you check the reviews, and if other people have yeah. broken ones like Norm does, I would probably look for a different brand. Yeah, I got this one in, and they was broke already. One of them was broke already, and this one here I've never used. That's why it looks so. Nice. Now, the one I have used, uh, I think this backpack runs uh, 49 or 59 bucks. Uh, that was actually the cheapest one I could find within my price range. And um, this one here, I have used. You can see it's beat up, it's cracked, it's broke. Um, believe it or not, this one here, the insides, the little, little plates here, they're warped from having so much lead in here and all that weight. So, them big no row sinkers kind of took a beating to it. That's why but, uh, I started using my DeWalt box for that same reason. Yeah, so after the first couple of good trips, I mean, I'm a big guy. I'm 6'2", 275 pounds, and it's it's pretty comfortable on me. I have no problems with it. And, you know. I mean, you got the guns, too, to, to help you yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> and it also, it does have a chest strap here, too. So that way you can tighten it up, you know, get it off the back and stuff a little better. Uh, but that's one little thing I want to share with y'all because I don't see very many bank fishermen. Well, don't take this the wrong way. I don't see a lot of the older fishermen do it, um, you know. But for some of y'all older folks that are having problems carrying stuff, you know, need an extra hand, this is this is awesome. This is awesome. Now, I see a lot of youngsters doing it. I mean, a lot of y'all still consider me a youngster. I'm only 31, but, you know, and it does have padding in the back. So it's it's so Lyle, nice. Lyle, you hear that? You got uh the youngsters <laughs> are carrying the backpacks now. <laughs> okay. Um I haven't seen this come up yet. Uh this was actually gave to me and it has worked pretty well. Any bank fisherman should invest in one of these. Thermosel. Oh, yeah. Thermosel. Um I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all know what these are. These are to repel uh, mainly mosquitoes. Uh, this is the Mr. 300 series. There you go, you Mike can... Greenwell. <laughs> he just said, why haven't I heard anyone mention bug spray? Boom. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, Avid Fisherman is the one that gave me this because I went live one time. and He heard me complaining about the, the mosquitoes. He's like, hey, I'm going to send you something. I was like, all right. I thought he was going to send me some bug spray. I hate using bug spray. I don't want it on my bait and my poles. And, you, know, um, you know, it's got a refillable. You mm -hmm. just slide that out, put your new one in. Okay. Um, it's got a little butane container here. You know, in this case, you don't know how it works. You just screw it out. The screws in. 
Um, I've used this, I want to say about five or six times this year, especially in the summertime. Ugh. Ugh. Hey, Marie says that those attract bats. You ever had any problems with bats? Not that I've paid any attention to, no. <laughs> that, you that still got a heartbeat, surprise. right? <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, now I know y'all been talking about chairs. Uh, y'all y'all may have seen this one here. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, we saw you. We you we saw you throw that off your porch. Yeah, this here's a pretty good old chair here. It's just the Ozark Trail director's chair. Uh, I first show it off a little bit. Does have a nice little table on it. It's supposed to hold up to six hundred pounds. Uh, thirty nine bucks is what I paid for this, and I've had it for going on over two years. But it'd be three in April. Um, you know, it folds up and now it's not very light. I will say that it's not very light, uh, but it's very well heavy constructed. It's got some pretty good size, uh, still tubular on it. And they do have, uh, some kind of enamel coating on it. So it won't rust out on you. Um, you know, this thing set out last year, all winter. And, you know, that's why the table's in such bad shape. Yeah. But, Katie you know, agrees course, with you. It's really heavy. She said she has one. Yeah, they're they're not fun packing. You get a long distance. This is not the chair you want. Now, if you're pulling up somewhere and have maybe twenty steps from the car, fantastic, great. But long trip, no, I wouldn't. Norm, no. does the thermocell help keep the gnats away from you when you turn your headlight on so you don't inhale fifty gnats? It, it it I will say this. It will help. Sorry, guys. It will help some. It's not gonna. It's not a. You know, it's not like chicken breast. It's not a miracle bait. But uh, it does help. It does help. I will say that. It does help. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've got one or two little things here else to share. All right. I know that. Uh, sorry, I just got a message. Uh, rod holders, bank holders. Now, this here is a cheap solution for some of y'all bank fishermen. It's just it's nuts and fancy. You know, it's got a nice little point. Easy to go in and about anywhere. It works really good on the beaches uh, because it has this wider bar here. And, you know, you can get more back pulling yeah, out. Yeah, a lot more friction, yeah. Uh, this here is adjustable. Uh, I've had this for probably about five or six years. Uh, that's why it's rusted. I've never changed it out. Uh, you get these at Cabela's or Bass Pro for a four ninety five. dollars uh, They're steel. Bad. They're strong. They're good. <laughs> um, work real good in ground just clay rug or clay on the bank rock areas you know you got a little bit to work with there you got to dig out a little bit but it works great that's a cheap alternative um i have one more some of y'all have seen that seen these and these are becoming my favorite these ones here yeah so these, that's what i thought stan had earlier today and these here you know they're cheap there's uh 7.95 each for these these are the eight inch ones. They actually got some that are 14 and don't hold me to it, but I think 18 as well. Some a little bit taller. These work really good for me. Um, the only problem I have is where I fish that on the Ohio River. Mm. I've got rock and sand, and it's really hard to get this through all that. So, what right. I usually have to do is I'll take this and literally just dig out a hole just like that. Then shove it down underneath of it, down in, in between all the rocks and stuff. Tim Molina says that's a vampire slayer. Vampire for, slayer for when your you bat go. for when your bats come from your thermocell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more little thing because I know there's other people waiting. I don't want to keep everybody waiting. Um, you got to have lights. Mm. Any sort yeah. of lighting, you know, you got to have some sort of light. I like seeing what I'm doing. Of course, if you're, um, we're talking about if you're night fishing. Yeah. Night fishing, yes, correct. Uh, I don't think you'll need it daytime if you do. You may no. want to go <laughs> Maybe if you get there early in the morning. Yeah. Uh, this one here has become one of my favorites. This is on Amazon. I'm sorry. I don't know the name. I'm sorry, you guys. I forgot it. Uh, sure, just show here, it to them closely so they can look for it. Cool. This here is rechargeable. Uh, it also acts as a backup battery bank too you can plug your mm. phone up recharge it while using it um cool. i've used this quite a few times it's pretty bright it's got two settings where one light will work or the other i 
<laughs> and then it does have a little stand on the back of it, so you can stand yeah. it up or hang it. I have it. a Craftsman one just like that from Lowe's, but it doesn't have – it's not rechargeable. It's just AA batteries. I don't mind. I don't mind the AA ones. They're not bad. You know, it just – I think rechargeable is where it's at. Yeah, it is. And the batteries do last a long time, but, yeah, I'd rather have something rechargeable. Uh, this does have a, a battery indicator, too. Oh, that's fancy. So it does let you know if it's charged up or not. Two bars, I can go about six hours with one light on. Two hours with both lights on if it's half charged. Um, you know, I've got a, I've got a, um, a um, crud. What's it called? The uh, a DC inverter in my car, and I charge mm -hmm. it up before I get up there fishing. And I got one more thing to show y'all. This here is also right. on Amazon. Uh, this here is my favorite headlamp. Uh, you can get two of these for, I think, 19 bucks. And what I like about this one here is, is when you're fishing, you always got something nasty on your hands. Always. Well, all you got to do with this one is take your hand. Well, I'm going to put it on the right setting. Sorry. There's a setting on it. <laughs> there we go. Hey, I had it on the wrong. So there's cool. three different settings. You know, that's say cool. you got to, oh, got a bite. Don't want to touch the, don't want to touch the, the hat's throwing it off. See, like if you're fishing with chicken and you don't want to get chicken on your light. There you go. I'll take my hat off. It'd be better. See? That's it's really cool. settings on it as well, you know. I've never seen that, actually. On. Yeah, so it's pretty bright. It does It does, it does good for me. So Awesome. I get my headlamps from Michael Marillo. Oh, really? <laughs> Mark, you got, any, you got any more of them headlamps? <laughs> hey, hey, you got any more of them headlamps? <laughs> <laughs> I can get that headlamp. <laughs> now, I, I was going to show off my wagon, but I, it's nothing spectacular. Uh, Chunky ain't been up here yet, has he? I, joined, I come in late. No, he's here, but he's not in yet. Okay. I'll, I'll, I don't even, I'll, I don't I'll, even know if I'm going to bring him on. I Depends on his I, attitude. Depends on his attitude. There you go. <laughs> I'm but, just uh, kidding. That's all I have to show for y'all. I don't want to show. Uh, what brand is the headlamp? Cat Chaser. Sorry to cut you off, but I didn't want you to go without telling. What brand is your headlamp? Um, it's a. It just says headlamp on it. That's all it says. <laughs> I'm serious. Look, that's all it says. Headlamp. That's yeah. all it says. Josh and said I, I think... start swatting mos mosquitoes and end up causing a seizure from the light oh. strobing. <laughs> <laughs> before y'all before I go, this is rechargeable as well. And it does tell you the battery level on it as well. Wow, you got some fancy equipment, man. Look at you. Trying to. That's it's awesome. USB micro, so yeah. You know. Do do those rechargeable bat uh lights also use a battery as a backup? Uh I'm trying to understand this that. one or uh, Tim asked that question. Do do those rechargeable light also use a battery as backup? No. So when that battery no. is dead in it, it's dead. Gotcha. Cool, man. Hey, Norm, I appreciate it, dude. Thanks for having me on. All right, man. Have a good night. Bye, y'all. Bye. All right. We tried to have this guy on last weekend. He was having phone issues, but I've been looking forward to having this dude on. You've seen him in chat. You've seen him on Instagram, but now you get to see him live. Mr. Ryan hey, from Setting Hooks and Crossing Eyes. What's up, buddy? What's going on? Can you hear me? Yeah, man. Loud and clear. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, real quick. Um, yeah, I'm just going to show you pretty much what he was just talking about. I got a backpack similar and, uh, you know, that's pretty much all I need right there. I got my bait bucket with the uh, aerators. I got, this is actually something cool I'll take off here, but I just wanted to show you it all clips on there for easy, uh, easy go. But this is something cool for the guys. You know, I, I like to sneak into some spots and this is actually, uh, <laughs> this is actually a bucket. This is a seat for a bucket, you know, so you can get even more limited on what you got. And then, you know, my lights click on here, pretty much the same as what he was just showing, some rechargeable ones. And uh, I got some rod holders. If I can get it out of here, you know, it can be a pain sometimes. Ah. <laughs> well, usually usually you got two hands. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, you get the gist of it. So, but, uh, you know, I got if my If you don't light mind, put your phone down there. Put your phone down there close to your pack so we can see what you got. Okay. 
see if I can. It's a, I'll it. try to make the screen bigger. There you go. So you got a bungee holding stuff on there. And yeah, I got one bungee got... holding stuff. Cool. I Show us your bucket. Holding... Yeah, my there bucket. There you go. Yeah. Do that. Do that. There All you right. go. That's perfect. There's my bucket. I got a hole drilled in there. This this I take on my kayak also. So, uh, you know, I have to drill a hole. This is actually screwed. You know, I got a bolt on there, so that's not going to fly off. And then uh, oh, that's good when idea. I need to reach in there, I can grab in there. Right now I got my drift stock in there, but um so yeah, what is what do you got that bucket. i do a lot what of kind of aerator what you know, kind of aerator do you use mr bubbler the, you know i'll put both the of these you in get there from walmart I, yeah just walmart whatever whatever you know i don't do nothing fancy um but you know i'll double up on these aerators sometimes i'll have like 24 baits in there bluegills and bullheads and i'll double up on that aerator for sure and uh you know this the backpack's got everything i need you know you went over a lot of rigs and shit there stuff last week and uh you know i uh pretty much got all that stuff but i, I kind of wanted to go over some uh some like how to find locations and stuff like that sure um, yeah let's do it talk about it and how, how to use uh google maps you know it, to m maybe make life a little easier i don't know if you can pull up somewhere on google maps you know anywhere that you got and uh, we'll try and find a spot maybe all of us can find a spot together All right, give me a second. And I'll just show you a couple of tips that I use. I just got to share the screen I wish real I could quick. See the chat at the same time while I'm. One second, y'all. Sorry. I would have had it pulled. All right, you can see it. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, tell me yeah, what you want me to look up. Okay. Uh, you know, let's go. We're. We're, uh, we're let's go to a body of water that uh you know that you normally fish or somewhere that's good to fish uh i i was fishing lake moultrie uh okay. yesterday i don't want you to tell me a spot we're just going to try and find a spot together you know yeah well so if you're looking for bank fishing um this is i'll show you where i was camping how about that all right that'll work You're on that island, yeah. You got there from right the there. Local, right? Chimney Island, yep, right there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's why I wanted to satellite. But if okay. you wanted to let's say you wanted to fish Harry's fish camp, there it is right there. Yep. Okay. Let's say you wanted to snipe Palmetto spot and you knew he was on that island. Let, yep, let's <laughs> zoom in there. <laughs> All right. Zoom yeah, there in. was the beach we were on right there. <laughs> okay. So let's zoom in, go to the bank over there. All right. There we so go. there's is there a road? There's there's a road. Let's go to like somewhere where Let's find somewhere where you're gonna park first, you know. Somewhere for somewhere wants to go easy, you know. Yeah, right there. So zoom in, zoom in. Okay, so click on that road, on on the main road. Go to the right a little bit. It might not work yet. Click on it. Yeah, I did. Let's did see. you? Yeah, click right there, like you're gonna put a pin. Okay, now go on that thing, that little, go down there where it opened up that little screen. Down right in the here? bottom, yeah. You no, know, no, the picture. Click on the picture. Oh, okay. Hold okay. on. Click on the picture. All right. Yeah. So now yeah. you can actually see where what's going on, and you can. This is a lot of times how I find bank spots. I will go to the roads and I will look on here, you know, and I can see. I'll find trails that go into the woods in the middle of nowhere, and I'm, and then I'll go on Google Maps back to Bird's Eye and find, you know, how I'm going to get to that spot. So this is a this tells you a lot sometimes. And if you let's say you you see you you know a good spot and you're like, well, I've never been there. I don't know where to park. You can find somewhere to park like that. A lot of times I find no fishing signs that way. Before I even go there, I can find a no fishing sign. So I'm like, okay, I'm not even going to go to that spot. That's a good idea. You know what I'm saying? It helps me out yeah. a lot. You know, to, before I get there. Um, you know, yeah. Sometimes, so you can see I, where you're going before you get yeah, there. You yeah, you can. That's you can see idea. where you're going. You can see a lot. No, you know, if you want, if you see guys that are fishing on a spot and you don't know how they got there, you can go down the road and you'll find a trail sometimes and be like, "That's the trail those guys took," you know. And uh, that that helps me out a lot. And especially for parking, you can find your parking spot and how you you know exactly how you're going to walk and get to that spot. And uh, I, I, that's something I wanted to show everybody that just to make it uh, 
You know, something you can do before you even leave the house, you can do that. That's a great idea, man. You know, and then if you have Navionics, let's say you want to go to a spot, you know, then that's when I'll back, I'll bounce back and forth to Navionics and I'll see, I'll, I'll look at the water and see, you know, is it a good fishing spot that way, you know, and then that, that'll determine if I'm going to go try that spot. Yeah. So once you, once you've pinned it down on Google maps and then mm-hmm. you look and now, you know, you've, you figure out, yeah, I'm going to go fish there. Then you look at Navionics and see what the, the w- actual water looks like that you're going to yep. fish. That's, that's yep. genius, man. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it saves me time it, a lot yeah. of times, you know, I, I, I want to go to a spot and I'll, I'll be on there and I'll say no fishing time. I'll be like, Oh, cross that off the list. You know? <laughs> Let's see what's, yeah. what's down the list, you know, go to the next yeah. spot. Okay. I can do this. You awesome. Know? And uh, yeah, that was something I really wanted to bring up and going back. just No, that's some, great, some, man. Going back to some things that I keep in my pack that no one's mentioned. Uh, I like some loppers, man. Sometimes I go to a spot and you go to cash and you, <laughs> next thing you know, you're wrapped up in that tree. <laughs> I'm cutting everything there is, man. I don't care, you know. And then, uh, you know, I like to keep tape. Tape comes in handy. I keep that in my bag. Sometimes I'll tape my uh, my rod holders to a, a dock post or something. You know, if there's nowhere to put a rod holder, I'll, I'll tape my, you know, and what I'll do is I won't use the sticky side. I'll flip it around the back side and wrap it so oh. there's no tape residue getting stuck on someone's nice dock. You know what I'm saying? So when they come, I'm like, hey, it's okay, you know, and then uh, it'll just come right off. So I, I, I think outside the box a lot, you know, a lot of times. That's, no, that's and awesome, I, man. These rod holders I use too, you know, the little ones that you got to watch out because some of the, the butts won't fit in them. Right. Um, yeah, so I, you, you go with the big ones. And actually, I find – I people just leave these things laying all over you can just find them if you go to if you do enough fishing it's probably so, first time bank fishermen just buying what they need and going out there and they're not used to packing everything back up right right and then um with the lights i don't i don't keep my lights on i do i like bells i, I like to just be silent no lights you know and when that bell i hear a little jingle I'll, then i kick lights on you know and then that's when we, awesome. that's when the show starts so awesome. but you know i like I like to have the lights also for pictures. You know, you got to have yeah, pictures. Yeah, so. you take good pictures. So someone's yeah. asking about your YouTube channel. Ryan doesn't really do YouTube. He does Instagram. So go check out Setting Hooks and Cro- It's actually Redbeard Ryan, right? Redbeard and Whiskers on, on uh, Instagram. Redbeard yeah. Whiskers on Instagram. Whiskers. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, he YouTube. takes some beautiful pictures, um, and, and he, he's got short videos on Instagram too. Yeah, I got a couple of short videos. Yeah, I, I, I like to get the flatheads in in. You know, I like to get cats. You know, I, I tear up channel cats. I tear up. Oh, man, he does, y'all. Go check him out on Instagram if you haven't already. He He's he's an excellent angler. You, and, uh, you see me. I, I've been on some Johnson from Hook Catfish videos. I've been quite a few of those, you know. And, uh, you know, he's, he's been a good friend of mine for 20-plus years. So awesome. I've been quite a bit of his videos. So. Well, Ryan, I'm so happy we got you on the show, man. Yeah, me and yeah. you talk every once in a while, and I'm so happy yeah. to actually get I you got on, a, man. I, I just put your, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, where you at? Can you see it? Yeah, man. My sticker. There All right, is. cool. Yeah, it's on there. So, awesome, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Take one. care, brother. Yeah, you guys have a good night. You too, buddy. All right. We got Mr. Jesse, Outdoors Addiction. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's hey. up, man? Uh, before you start, I want to do my channel of the week because – Right. Man, with this 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 live stream has flown way faster than I thought it would. We y'all, we've been live for 54 minutes. Do you believe that? That's crazy. But uh I'm going to shout out a guy that um was supposed to be on the show tonight, but he had some come up and you know, we all have those times when it comes up, but I want you to check out his channel and I won't mess it up this week like I did last week. Has the letter separated? <laughs> yeah, so I don't mess it up. You last last week I said Richard Gene the Green Machine, and it was Richard Gene the Fishing Machine, and everybody got me on that. But uh, Top Tactic Fishing, uh, if you can't see it, go check out his channel. Uh, awesome bank fisherman. Um, he's also uh, serves in our military, and if you've seen Joe from Chat Cats Fishing, it's his twin brother. Uh, so go check it out, Top Tack Fishing. All right, Jesse, go for it. Uh, we're going to start off with the backpack that I use. Let me know if you guys can't see. I got the 5,000 lumen uh, light on, so it's kind of bright. It's kind of blinding me right now. Um, we're going to just start out with this one. 
this is a cheapo backpack that you can find at Walmart. It's probably about, let me get in frame, it's probably about 25 bucks. And the only reason I got it for the, I got the rod holders over here that I use for these little, I think they're called Molly compatible little straps. It's more okay. of like a military type bag. And I just stick the rod holder, the pole or the rod right in here so I can hold them up here. And uh, I'm gonna try to bring the camera over here so I can open it up. I don't have much in it. Uh, the lighter, the better for me. This is the only plastic case I got um, in that backpack, which doesn't contain much. It only contains what I need. There's a couple hooks and swivels and things like that in there. I don't want to tip it over too much. Over the other way. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't ruin your night. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I got more of these at home. Like I came river fishing. I'm at the Rock River here in Illinois, um, and I should have brought the other the other plastic bin with me, but I didn't. It's all full of lead. That thing is just it's probably about I don't know 15 or 20 pounds. So I wasn't thinking about bringing that out here. So I got separate uh, leads to go with it. Uh, let's see what else what I got. I'm going to have to take everything out. All right, over here, I just got like rubber gloves when I mess with dip bait. Yes, I mess with dip bait from time to time. There's my leader line. There's no shame in dip bait. <laughs> There's no shame in dip bait. No. What I use for my leader line, it's 50 pound uh, Eagle Claw. Yeah. I know. Um, I've been trying to get away from the braid. Um, I don't have a lot of stuff in here. I got a couple sinkers and there are river sinkers here. And that's all, I call them discs. Some people call them coins. I don't know what they're really called, but as long as, you know, I, I use them for the river. I don't use Co them. Coin, disc, they're all circles. <laughs> all the same thing, man. Then over here, I, I talked about this on my channel before. Uh, when I use chicken livers and things like that, that's At Atlas Mike spawn it, and it's it's just uh, like a, a netting. That oh, okay. It's perfect for uh, for like liver and stuff like that. Keeps but, it on the hook. Oh yeah, it keeps it on the circle hooks. I don't really like to use the trebles. Uh, I used to use them, and all all it would do was tear the the fish's lip apart, and I didn't like that. If you're not gonna keep them, why why destroy the fish, right? Right, right, right. And this is from Atlas Mike's too. This is what I was talking to you guys about. Um, it's like a it's a stretchable. Uh, I don't know, you know what it's called, man. But it's, <laughs> string. Yeah, it's like a string, and you wrap it around, and it tears right off. So that's it for that, man. I don't really have much. And it looks like you carry all your stuff in a wagon. I do. I do. I got my wagon. It's like, I don't know if you guys can see it there. Uh, you got a chair like Norm over there? I do got a chair like Norman, man. When he was throwing that off his deck, man, I was like, what is he doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> My son over there, that's his own chair over there, so we don't have to stand up all the time. I'm going to show you guys this over here. I got, a, I got something I want to show you at the end of the video. Okay. For my lights, this is all I carry. It's just another tackle box. I shove all my lights that I use on the tripods and on the ground. This is all I use. I got the cable cords. And uh, these were the, I'm gonna have to put all that stuff back. These are the ones, the battery chargers that I use. Oh, they're, wow. Uh, they're about 25 bucks. So I bought two of them. Supposedly they recharge your phone, lights, whatever you need to charge up to 14 times from 0% all the way to 100%. So that's 28 charges in these two batteries. That's awesome. That's what I use. Um, cooler. For my baits, I don't have uh, no live wells, anything like that. I catch my bait and they go directly into a plastic bag into the freezer. That's the dip. Those are the baits that I caught on the video that I posted last time. They're all creek chubs. And I always told myself that I would never, ever use catfish for bait. And in this bag, there's probably a 20, <laughs> there's a 20 inch channel cat in there for bait. I told myself I'll never do that, but might as well try everything, see if it works. Yeah. Um, let me bring you guys over here real quick. This is just the cart, man. It's no biggie. It's just like, it's just like chunkies. If you guys can see that there, uh, nothing special to it. 
uh, it's a collapsible one and it folds up for easy storage in your car or your your truck or whatever this is the mount that i use for my chest for my phone mm. that, that's what i record with is with my cell phone um i did buy a net i was talking i forgot what i think it was my own channel my own live that i'll buy a net and this one the biggest one that i found that wasn't that much i'm a cheapy man so i try to get stuff for the cheapest yeah that's a walmart net i had that one and uh, i don't know how long it's gonna last it's like it's dipped in rubber but as that, long as you lift it straight up and you don't try to lift it long ways it'll last you uh, like, i i had that when i lifted from the handle with all the weight in the bottom without without turning it upright and it bent yeah and i mean i hope it lasts it's by ozark trail so i mean so it's yep. a down here and that's walmart's brand. Mm. some people have their different opinions about that yeah uh, lights let's talk lights man um we'll start off with this one that i have on my head this one i've mentioned it before it's by hyper tough it's a headlamp it's about 400 lumens um i don't know i don't want to blind you guys but it has that two settings there and it has another setting another button over here for it's just it's a little bit lighter but if you have them all four going at the same time, it's about 400 lumens. Of course, I don't take that when I'm day fishing, uh, which I'm gonna start pretty soon because I'm gonna be starting work soon. Got another lamp over here that I use. This one here, it's another Hyper Tough brand. You can find these all at Walmart. This one's about a thousand lumens. And I think I paid about 25, 30 bucks. Now we're gonna bring on the, the, the light that my son's using to blind me. <laughs> to help you <laughs> to help me, right. uh, another hyper tough all these all these are, they're at walmart man so this one's 2500 lumens and the other one on the tripod is exactly like this one except it's bigger and wider and it's 5000 cool. so the the rat holder that i'm using let me show you the rat holder real quick these so are, much knowledge all right yeah, what's these that are, these are the only rod holders I use, man, and you can find them at Farm and Fleet, uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. I do not recommend that you go on eBay and buy these because they, they'll charge you about 12 to 15 bucks when you can go to Farm and Fleet or Dick's. I don't know if Dick's Sporting Goods, goods I don't think they sell any more fishing stuff, but uh, they used to, and you can find them for five or six bucks there. So I don't recommend you buy well, them. That's kind of like the bigger version of what Stan and uh, Ryan were using. The large coil ones. So mm -hmm. the ones at Walmart, those orange ones, they're they're junk, man. <laughs> oh, all right, you get one good fish on, and the, the the rod down here just bends out of hell. Yeah. Okay, one more thing before I'm done, man. I don't. The less, the better for me. And um, I don't know if you guys want to see the tripods. It's just a tripod holding my phone, and a tripod holding uh, one of the five thousand lumen lights. This is what I wanted to show you, and it's nothing to do. Nobody, I don't think nobody showed this yet, or what they what they're using, or what they use. But this is a rod that I'm using now, and I hopefully, I don't know, get your attention. This is the Shattercat rod. Oh yeah, I remember that one, that one time. Yeah, I was looking for a, a, someone with a Shattercat. I don't think yeah, we had found each other yet. Not figure out how to do anything with the whole live stream and all that. <laughs> That's okay. You're showing yeah, I mean, us now. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this in the dark, but it's a heavy action rod, 7'6", 40 to 100 pound, says 40, uh, 40 to 100 pound line, and it holds uh, 16 ounces of weight. Um, at the time that I bought this, um, I really didn't look at the specs, and uh, I, I usually use a medium heavy. This is a, it's a heavy and it's kind of a broomstick. Uh, <laughs> fishing, man, I would say if you're catching 50, 60 pounders like, like Carl, yeah, he could be using these easy, man. And mm -hmm. they're, they're pretty good. Well, um, uh, Chat Cats used to use all Shatter Cats. Chat Cats? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And on here, it's just, you know, it's a, the aluminum real seat. I got the Abu Garcia up in here. This is a 6600, the C4. And I still got braid on this one, man, which I'm going to probably next year will probably have some mono on it. I'm trying to get away from braid because what it does is it ruins your the tip. It, yeah. it just digs into that. No matter if it's stainless steel or it's an insert, man, it just starts to dig in. After time, it starts to dig into that, and you just have to replace them, man. Yeah. 
That's pretty much it, man. I'm out here night fishing, man. Dude, Hopefully. that's awesome. You got a great setup, man. I mean, that's all I use, that bright light. People across the river probably can see me right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey if y'all haven't checked him out yet go check out outdoors addiction he goes live a lot and uh shares all of his stuff he's not afraid to answer questions so um if actually, you didn't get enough of him tonight go check his channel out actually i was gonna go live after this after your show i'll go live for awesome or so if my son got school tomorrow so i won't shoot be man go live now don't worry about my show oh no, no i'll watch, <laughs> watch you now, man all right brother thanks all a lot pleasure thank you all right bye-bye well i did have jared jared was having phone problems jared from one ton um if he pops back in i'll bring him in uh let's see should i wait chunky mate wait longer <laughs> what's up buddy? what's going I'm on gonna bring, i'm gonna bring my boys oh, in boy. here what's up <laughs> what's going on morillo oh, i'm just sitting here Leia came downstairs. She doesn't want to give up her tablet. <laughs> All right. All right, Chunky. Go ahead, brother. All right. So I don't know where to start, to be honest. There are, a lot of people already talked about a lot of things. So I'll kind of talk and go over my stuff literally quickly here. So we'll go over back there in here in just a second. Um, let's kind of start off with the basics. Uh, turn off this. So I guess these, these are things that I will not leave the house unless I have these few items here. The most important one to get me going fast. <laughs> that Potomac the punch. We, we need the we need the monster. Um, another thing that's really important is scissors. Um, if you have to re-rig, um, I used to use my teeth and I take care of these teeth now. So a uh, pair of scissors, uh, a knife, a knife to cut your bait, or just to kind of have around. It's really important. Um, your weight, uh, uh, your scale to to weigh a fish. Um, I first I recently just got a different uh, scale um from the whisker seeker but you definitely need a a scale and wait wait wait. go back to the scale you got a oh, new one i got a new one it's it's a cheapy from um can you see that or not yeah yeah okay i mean i haven't tried it out to be honest um the only thing that i was having trouble with the whisker seeker and it's happened to me several times it, it takes too long to lock in if you have any movement it just won't lock in and um yeah i just need something to, i'm trying something different to see if it locks in quicker but you know that's that's up to you i always bring a hammer i'll tell you why because i used to use this type of um rod holder i can kind of go over this real quick this is really really easy and i love these rod holders it's pvc pipe rebar and then just just duct tape that's all it is no 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 clamp nothing like that just duct tape and i use this type of um rod holder for many many years and i love it i absolutely love it so that's why i had to take the hammer so i can i, I always like to have my stuff really nice and so that's the interesting the rebar PVC pipe and, and tape. duct tape. That's it. That's it. I, I I mean, here's the downfall of these is that they're heavy. I mean, they're, yeah. they, they are heavy, but I mean, oh, I, I love these these rod holders. Um, last thing, I'm not I'm not a, a fish grip person, but you either need fish grips or the Michael Jackson glove. Um, yeah. I prefer, I prefer <laughs> the Michael glove over the fish grips. Um, these were sent to me by um whisker whisker sticks several years back and i've never even opened them out of the pack you know those those plastic fish grips i i had two of them anna got me one for christmas and i had one the rig uh rig wrap one i guess okay or rapala that's what it was and both of them i had a fish on and i had it locked down and the fish did a, a barrel roll yep. and it yep. broke broke yep. both of them so right. i don't use them right. anymore i use yeah, the no. glove and, and i'll be honest i'm more of a fist person but mm -hmm. sometimes when when the, these 30 pounders or the 20 pounders have really sharp teeth, I mean, it just mm -hmm. kind of depends. That's when I put on the glove um, mm -hmm. or it's 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 kind of beat itself too hard in the bank, doing a lot of barrel still. Um, it came in too green, um, like uh, Mason's 30 pound fish. When we landed that fish, I don't know if you saw some some of you who haven't seen the, the my four year old son caught a 30 pound fish and it kind of swam straight in. Um, and it came we landed him. He was kind of hurt himself on the bank. So that's when that's when I put the glove on. Cause I knew he was gonna tear me up. Um, all right, so um, here's the chair I used to use. These foldable, cheap from you can find anywhere. I've done away with that chair. Uh, we're using this one right here. Heavy duty, strong, comfortable, a little higher, and I can get up the, off the seat pretty quick. Um, and that's it, uh, about me. My first. You can three, survive first, a donkey <laughs> kick. <laughs> my first three. Yeah, exactly. This has been donkey kick. My first three steps are quick. 
I mean, fast. I, I want to turn and get to those rods. After that, anyone can pass me by. <laughs> you need to right. you need to wear cleats so you get some more traction. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so so here here's the I, I'm actually I'm gonna show you two setups. Um, th this is my old setup here. I'm sorry, guys, it's bouncing around. Um, this is the old setup where I'm talking about. Um, these these rod holders here yeah. that, that I just showed you, and then you know any kind of rod, any kind of rod, and um, it did the trick for for many many years. Um, and then I started going with the uh, with the wagon. Um, oh, this cool. wagon is pretty cool. Um, I run a bunch of black lights. Um, oh yeah, look at that look. <laughs> you can really see us. Um, I just discovered this feature. I don't know yeah, why I've never it. seen it before. <laughs> I love it. All right, so let me kind of last time. Last time I tried to do this, I just took myself out of the feed, <laughs> and um, and it it did weird stuff. So anyway, cool. yeah, yeah. So, so I I run I, I some of these rods are painted with fluorescent paint, and then number three is just wrapped with high reflective tape, but it's also fluorescent as well. Um, I, those who have never seen my show before, this was sent to me by Rick Creations. He just became Ricky's one of your Creations uh, Boom Squad. Boom, boom Squad. Good. Yeah. Awesome, Ricky. Good for you. So he sent me that sign. It's glass. It's awesome. It's got LEDs. And he also sent me that rod um, on that side. I'll, I'll show it here in a second. Um, here's my wagon. Uh, Michael Murillo that was just here a little while ago. He, I mean, he's still there. Sent me the battery that's in here. It's a deep cycle battery. Um, I use an inverter. Five black lights. I use three of the... I'm oh, sorry. It's this reverse camera. Uh, three of these bars. Uh, two in the back of the wagon. And then one on the bottom there. If that one shoots straight upwards. Um, I, I want to kind of illuminate everything as much as possible. I even have these sound activated lights. Um, those are the dangerous ones that cause accidents. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, my, my net, um, that's an Eagle two slider net. Of course. Hey, I took it Chunky, all pause, pause. Yes. Jason Ward wants to know, please talk about the brands of portable black lights. Nothing's portable. <laughs> everything well, has to be plugged in. Everything so they're not portable, but what brand are they? Oh boy, um, you got me in a spot. You have to go to my channel after the after Palmetto Show, and then I have most of them on the description. There you go. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. got he's got the links to all this stuff in the description. Most of it. Yeah, yeah. And I even have where are we? Um, this this floodlight. I used to run these um, two of those where these bars are at, right there. But I think the bars are a lot easier for me. Um, so three of those bars, two there, and then one down there. And then I even added this one right here is a black light. Um, this is my rod holder, and this black light strip that goes around is even a black light as well. I have this clamp on light. Um, I use this clamp on light here. Turn that on. Well, it's not plugged in. Uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to have light here. Um, <laughs> something went, on, went wrong there. That's um, all right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know what, what if I'm missing anything. But you know what? I've been really blessed that people like Michael Murillo sent me a battery. Ricky Creation sent me that sign, that awesome rod. Um, who else? Uh, Chad and Mrs. D sent me some reels. Um, I had a, a feller send me. Uh, he bought me some Abu Garcias. Can I show you my bait? I even keep some bait. Yeah. Ready hey, to go. don't forget about the the power station. Um, the inverter. Uh, and the bat, the battery, and the inverter. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of hard for me to. That's all right. Can y'all see that or not? It's a Max Pro. We can Pro. see it. Okay, it's a Max Pro. Uh, it's a 1,000 watt. You can see all my cables. I hope that I'm, 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 I'm behind the camera. And then that battery Michael Murill sent me, he can maybe give, give you a little information on the batteries in there. Um, of course, it's got, oh, it's already going low on battery. But sometimes when you leave it running, it shows low, but it's totally just fine. It can last four or five hours with all this equipment here. Oh, we, we know. We've seen <laughs> yeah, it. <laughs> you've seen it. <laughs> So one thing I was having trouble was finding eel. So I said, you know what? I need to, I need to buy eel and find a way how to keep them alive. And eel live forever as long as you have them aerated and properly taken care of. So I have a little. Here we go. This is a little a, a little outdoor. Well, it's just a, it's just a fridge. Um. Right there. Um. I, of course, I used to drink beer, but I kind of gave that up. Well, every now and then. But. I have an aerator blowing bubbles in there the whole time. And I have my, the eels re ready to go. Yummy. Yeah, <laughs> just ready to go. And they stay alive. I haven't had a single one die 
and I've had some in here for almost two months. Wow, two months? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you and have to funny, feed them? No, no, no. No, and it's funny because they're so cold in there. They're so cold that when I start getting a net, they freeze. They like go in shock for some reason because hmm. it's so cold. <laughs> That's interesting. Cool. And so if y'all don't know, uh, he uses those eels, uh, and I'm sure everybody in here subscribed to Chunky, but just in case, um, he uses eel for bait pretty much exclusively. Yeah, that's the hands down eel. Eel's the, my favorite bait. I mean, just hands down. I mean, I have tried chicken. Chicken did work. Um, yeah. I just want to show y'all, like, Chunky went out and set all this stuff up in his yard. <laughs> <laughs> and he might still catch a fish in the yard. <laughs> you might see the, the rods are going down. <laughs> <laughs> if rod two goes down, if the eel head goes down, we. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, rod one and two are being in silver cats. Um, good rod for the price. Um, they're not my favorite rod, but good, good rod for the price. $32 at Walmart. The next two. Um, or Whisker Seeker, some of my favorite rods, <clears throat> two, two and, uh, and four. Um, there, one has a paint job, one's just wrapped. It's men and a half foot, heavy, medium action. Well, it's the other way, medium, heavy action. Love those rods because I like to see those big takedowns. That's what everyone's there watching the show for those big takedowns. Right. Um, and then this rod, anyone who hasn't seen this rod was sent to me by Ricky Creations. This, this rod, this, this is, I think it's called Eel, Eel Wire. And it actually lights up. I have so much lights and black lights. You really can't tell, but it has a switch down here. Right. It lights up and I can charge it. It has a, <clears throat> he, he custom made this. I mean, he's the one who gave me this, the sign also. Um, so he's awesome. awesome. Hey. Yeah. Ricky, yeah. Ricky's cool. He is. That's he's awesome. awesome. I was checking. Now out he's on the boom today. squad. Boom. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's part of the Palmetto crew there. Oh, and, then, and cool. one last thing. Um, I don't know if you have anyone else, but I just, I was having trouble trouble weighing my fish in that net because that net's it's a big heavy net. Um, I just got a weighing sling. Um, mm -hmm. This one right here, it's actually made for carp, and I thought it was gonna be too big. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I do see it to be kind of big, but we're gonna it, it, this weighs a lot a lot less than that that my net. So we're gonna try this <clears throat> big catfish in here. Well, I say big. I hope they continue to be big. Like, <laughs> we just caught this past week. We caught a fifty pounder and a. 30 pounder so we're gonna try to give yeah this a so also y'all if you want a good weighing sling um check i mean that i'm sure that's a good one uh but i also know a local business a small business that makes some easterlin uh easterlin sea sea anchors they make drift socks i mean they make weighing slings they made mine and they even customized it with my name on it so um if y'all want check out chunkies and then if you want another one the how much did that one cost you um with shipping and everything it was uh, a little under fifty dollars a, a little okay. under fifty so that's about the same the ones that this lady makes are made out of vinyl yeah. and they're, they're about 50 bucks yeah I, I i believe it or not i i went on your one of your videos and mm -hmm. it, it seemed to be about the same size and i was to be honest yep. i was looking for smaller you know compact yeah i mean you stuff. you need you need the lightweight the, yeah <laughs> i have enough weight with this big battery and inverter mm -hmm. and all, all kinds of lights mm -hmm. Um, even that glass that Ricky sent me, that nice sign is pretty heavy. And he says, please take care of it. So I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> you know how things, uh, prototypes work out of my hands. They, they, they yeah, have my <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> cool. Well, hey man, I, I know you went through a lot of trouble to set all that up and, you know, I know we have fun, but I would never not bring you on, man, especially when we're talking about bank fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I'm glad you did. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you for showing us your setup. I know that's a lot of work to put up. No problem. <laughs> cool. All right, Chunky. We'll see you live next time. Take care, man. All right. All right, bye. Mr. Marillo, you got rid hey. of your baby girl. What happened? Oh, she's still up there protesting, going to sleep. But uh, well, that was well, look, actually, she was actually going to be my best prop. I'm uh, going to tell you to take a kid fishing. But There uh, you go. She's, She's stuck well, on that tablet right we now. We came to this one at the right time. Will Green said, bunch of the Euro carp gear would be great for catfish here. And guess what? Mike Murillo has all that stuff. Yes, I do. I didn't 
I'm going to put it out like an example, like everybody else. So I was hoping you either had links or we could just talk about some of the stuff. Like that rod pod that's directly below you on the on the screen here. This is a very fascinating way to hold your rods. I use mine quite often, especially if I'm going to fish for a long session. If I'm going to fish for any anything over three or four hours, eight hours maybe, I'm going to use that rod pod. It's a, it, They're adjustable. You can have the front come up or the back go down, whichever. Uh, it allows you to fish and keep your rods organized and up and off of the ground. Now, a lot of people talked about their the rod holders that they like here. But every single one of them that I've seen, it has to go into the ground. This does not. This is uh, a different option that you could have for some spots. Um, Chesapeake Bay catfishing has used it on a dock. And, and that's his way of keeping the rods up without, if there's no railing there or anything right. else that he can attach to. Um, that model that you have right there, I can't see the price, but that is actually the exact model that I have. <clears throat> $79.99. Okay. I was lucky and I happened to get mine for 50 bucks a piece, <clears throat> but that's the exact model I have. It's a real nice tubing. It's not heavy. It does take about 10 or 12 <clears throat> minutes to set up. Wow. So that, <laughs> that, if you're willing to invest those few minutes you can really have an enjoyable session on a bank that you just cannot drive anything into or on a dock or, you know, a, a big piece of concrete or something. Mm -hmm. You can set that up there. Uh, I like it also, too, when I have to use longer rods because I have okay. rods up to 12 feet long. And this thing in the middle there the, of the Oops. item you can see that the the main tube that goes from the front end to the back end, it also mm -hmm. extends out. So these pods can literally extend out and be, I think it's maybe about four foot. Uh, I'll call it a wheelbase. You get a okay. nice long wheelbase like that, and you can really steady your rods really, really <clears throat> nicely. Um, mm -hmm. Again, like you said, Kevin, brilliant point you brought up earlier. Make sure that you have your drag set appropriately yeah. <laughs> for how you're fishing, because since these are not uh, into the anchored. ground, they're not anchored. Um, you want to make sure your drag isn't too tight, because we all know how powerful these fish can be. They'll rock this thing. Um, the example here on the screen does come with alarms. That's the difference. Yeah. Okay. That's what that's Fight what alarms. makes this. That's what makes this a good deal. Um, I bought my alarm separately, um, so that's why I got one without alarms. But I, I've used it with, and you can use it without. They also, uh, th they're sold very generic, just a, a Y uh, rod rest. And a lot of them are really nice because they have a little groove at, at the base there, so your line can can flow freely through it. Oh, okay, so I, cool. I like those as well. The example right there is a great example of a bite alarm that you can attach to any rod. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and Luke from not, Catfish not and Carp, uh, he he was just, and the reason I have that one up is because uh, I don't know anything about bite alarms, and he just had this one in a video, uh, or maybe I saw it in an old video. It doesn't matter, but uh, this one, that little, those two, dots those two nipples i guess in the middle of it that's what your line goes in between those and whenever your line moves it twists that and that's what sets yep. it off and they're very inexpensive yep, like this one you get the a set, one, of, set of three the other ones your rod will sit right in the middle of it and there's a, a little roller inside of there that your line will move and inside of that roller is a small, I believe it's a magnet. So mm -hmm. if it rotates and and hits hits the sensor uh, either direction, no matter how it rotates, it's going to trigger that alarm. These, 
in the past I had made fun <laughs> of people for using them and <laughs> yeah. I feel really bad about it because they they are brilliant. Uh, that ex the example you're going through right there, those are hangers. They attach to the the rod pod. They come down. And then they attach to the line and they're weighted. So mm -hmm. if the fish uh, brings the bait back towards you, we call it a drop back bite. If they, if they bring the bait back towards you, it will also, that weight brings that line slack like that, which triggers the alarm. Now these alarms, I, I bought some and they have a receiver and I can be, uh, I think it's, 400 feet away from the alarm and it'll still transmit to the receiver that one of the alarms went off. I have a, a set that has four and a set that has six. And yes, for the record, you can fish with three rods in Iowa <laughs> by a third rod allowance. But you know, I, I have a family. So uh, yeah. I fish with more rods if I take them with. But uh, the great range. Uh, there's lots of name brands there. You know, buy what you can afford, buy what you want to try, you know, only spend what you need to spend to give something a try. I have some cheaper models that have names that I can't even pronounce. And <laughs> I've had them for six years and they're still going real strong. Uh, Cat Chasers yes, asked, are... how do you, sorry, buddy, I didn't mean to cut you oh, off. How, how do you uh, feel about using a rod clicker? and drag off completely so that the line free spools when pulled. I tend to do this when I can't use a rod holder. I, I still can't pull myself to do it, but honestly, it's just because I have so many rod holders and rod pods that I think I have six rod pods. So mm -hmm. I, I always use something. Um, <clears throat> but, but uh, yeah, I, I think that that it definitely would work. And in the past, before I even knew any of this equipment existed, I would I would open the bale on my spinning reels and let them sit there on the bank because I was just I didn't want to lose a rod and I didn't want to lose lose anything. Tell Marillo to start pretending to paint and tell us what he's painting. I guess because your voice is so calming that you sound like the the guy that paint used to paint pretty little birds. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe Bob Ross. Bob Ross, yeah. <laughs> Bob Ross. Oh. Uh -huh. You know, I'll I'll admit last the last time I was on, Anna had said that I had a soothing voice and I should like read stories or something like that. I had fallen asleep with Leia. <laughs> and Kristen woke me up. She's like, Ten minutes, you're supposed to be up and you're don't you ruin this show. She was like, Kevin's depending on you. And then <laughs> when I did get up, Leia saw you on the show and she's like that's your boyfriend. And she, <laughs> she came down. She came down yeah. right now and she goes, your boyfriend. I was like, that's oh, my friend. No. <laughs> he is a boy. <laughs> Anna's cackling in the next room. <laughs> oh, I, I tried to get her attention in the chat and oh, it's just it's too much fun. Lauren Sean T says Marillo ago. buys all this to collect dust. He's like a woman with knickknacks. Uh oh. You better be careful. Well, I guess I don't understand well you have don't you have like a vault <laughs> oh, oh yeah oh yeah i heard, yeah. I heard anyway someone needed some headlamps yeah but there you, you know, go if you got jokes i don't think you're getting headlamps yeah you got, you got compliments like that there guy on go. the other side of the screen you get headlamps <laughs> <laughs> cool so talk about um i don't know if there's any carp fishermen in here but uh like your rod is it something that you use do you use different rod setups for carp than you do catfish i do personally yes and that's just because i feel that the the channel cat is the predominant catfish around uh my local waters here around town and i just feel that they fight they're so much stronger that uh I, I definitely need to rot up a little bit and use a little bit thicker line i'm a mono guy and uh usually i end up catching both of them though and uh with the same stuff but uh I, i've been overpowered a few times in, in the last few years so i've been trying to gear up a little bit uh i do use longer rods if i want to cast further 
the rod distance is incredible. If if you've never experienced the casting distance that you can get from a 10 or a 12 foot rod, and if you think that there's fish out there that you want to try to get a hold of, but you just can't reach them, then it's definitely worth saving and investing the money in those longer rods. A 12 foot rod, and I'm I'm not the strongest guy in the world. Uh, my brother, my dad, my my dad, uh, and and my cousin could all cast further than me with the same equipment. And these guys are casting further than a football field and easily, easily over a hundred yards. So wow. It's kind of fun. Do you understand this question? Kind of an addiction. Gotcha. Do you understand this question? What's your favorite pound test curve? Okay, so the pound test curve is how they rate the rods. Um it's the it's a strength, is really what it is. Um I have some that are two point 2.5, 3.0, 3.25. And I don't have any heavier than that. What I will say is uh, my my arms are not what they used to be. And uh, that's probably not going to get any better because I just don't lift weights. That's just not going to happen anymore. <laughs> so I, I do like a stronger rod. And I would say um, I would go with a 3.0 or a 3.25. Okay as a middle range and the next uh, rods that that I'm going to buy after I get the Muddy River <laughs> rod, the next rods that I'm going to get are probably going to be 3.5s, but don't kill, don't tell Kristen. <laughs> we won't. What, what battery bank did you, uh, did you give Chunky with? Okay. I, I didn't give him a battery bank. I gave him a 12 volt, 75 amp deep cycle battery. Mm. Um, it it's probably too much and too heavy. It's it's like a 45, 50 pound battery. But then the wow. guy just started going crazy and he was adding lights all over the place. So it's it's worked out pretty good. Um the I would say buy the battery that's gonna power what you need to power for as long as you need to power it. And a great example was was told the other night. Somebody it was a live stream. And they asked me, hey, I have this light and I have this 100 amp hour battery. How long can it power for? And it is it could literally power that one light for 77 hours. Wow. So he's carrying he's carrying around a 70 pound battery and he doesn't need to. He can save his back, <laughs> save his arms, get something smaller and, and do the same job. But if he wants to add on to it. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah he could yeah. probably take chunky's lights times three wow and last as long so listen don't get chunky wanting another battery now <laughs> yeah yeah fishing I with jbt says too. he has two i guess rods that are 2.75 mm -hmm. uh s curve ngt carb rods and then you got another question um What's the best place to get carp gear in the States? Probably the easiest place to get it would be bigcarptackle.com. It's amazing. They're in Tulsa, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. They, they usually ship your stuff out the same day or the next day if you're mm. a little bit late. They're a fantastic group of guys. They have a Facebook page. Um, I have never knock on some wood. I've never had any issues with any of my orders they have a bargain bin where they're constantly clearing out uh product this and that um uh there's so much stuff to buy you know i i don't own all of it and i never will despite my but you'll try <laughs> i'm gonna try i'm gonna try that's right that's right i'm not a quitter but <laughs> mr arco says uh baits for cats baits baits for cats carp from the bank so, um, you know, I think the baits for catfish are pretty much the same, but what about baits for carp from the bank? Um, I've, I've learned that anything that you can catch a carp on, you can probably catch a catfish on it. If it's in front of them, they're going to grab it. Uh, last year I even caught a, a, uh, 20 pound musky on a carp bait. He was probably swimming around with his mouth open and said, Hey, look. Here's something pink. I want to eat it. And he ate it. But uh, definitely something that can catch both would be feed corn. 
I, I catch a lot of them on feed corn. Uh, you can see a lot of that in, in Luke's videos. Um, our, our channel of the week, uh, Top Tactic. You guys need to watch his videos. This guy catches both of them all the time. That's that's the best place I would I would direct you to. Uh, I'm I'm pretty much just to to fill in. Um, <laughs> no, you're not, man. You got a wealth yeah. of knowledge. Don't sell yourself short. Creole catfishing comment of the night. Best carp bait for me is a Mercury 115 at half throttle. I think he's got those Asian carp. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I don't fish for those uh, yet. I'm sure they'll find their way closer to me soon enough. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between a normal catfish rod compared to a carp rod? So let's say, um, you know, a, a muddy river rod compared to what you use for carp fishing. What's the difference? Uh, the, the carp specific rods that I have are all carbon. They're so it's a very, very, uh, different, um, rod. They're very thin, very lightweight, and typically longer. Um, the guys over there across the pond, they use a shorter rod for stalking. So if they can see carp, you know, down right off the bank, excuse me, um, doing their business or looking around, looking for some food, they'll just take a, a shorter rod. Here's where that tester test curve comes into play there. Um, since they use that system, we use a, a, a way to rate our rod action too. The lower the number, the closer you are to medium light action rods. The closer the number gets to three and a half or five is when you get into medium heavy and heavy action rods. So they use a shorter rod with a lighter test curve. If they're fishing real close to the banks to catch them, and it, here's here's the reason why they like it to kind of be like a shock absorber, so mm. that way you're you you're catching the fish. You literally only have maybe four to ten feet of line out there, and that big carp hits that and just takes off. You need something to, to mm. comfort that mm -hmm, a little bit, mm -hmm. or you really risk breaking off instantly right on that big hit um we used to buy makes sense that had that light nice medium action that chunky always talks about just because we love seeing that rod bend over and you know maybe the fish wasn't only but you know five or ten pounds but you're like look at this rod it can just bend in half and as i get older i'm just like you know if i catch a really big fish on this i'm not gonna land it if i do <laughs> that i need to try to size my gear appropriately yeah, and you've got me, you know, kind of wanting to try some carp, um, carp fishing. And I, I did take, I did take some bait out, some corn out for the uh, on the camping trip. But man, we had so much crap going on. I, I didn't want to add another thing to it. And actually, all I had was a bait rod and my muddy river cat fishing, my flathead rod. So I don't know if that would have been the right, <laughs> the right setup. But uh, you got a lot of people what talking size about carp you got into. I think yeah. there's no question that the flathead rods can handle it. Uh, oh yeah, I'm sure I've they can. I've done handle some it. research on Lake Moultrie, and you have some gigantic carp in there. Oh yeah, we so, I've seen them. I've yeah, I've had them hit the boat you before. Do use big rods like that. I've had I've had carp hit the boat before that you know look like three or four feet long. Um, wow. Actually, in the river, uh, in our in the Cooper river, there's a bunch of them. You see them jumping all the time. Um, I've hooked one before that ripped my, ripped my, uh, my hook off when I was brim fishing. Just, we have, we have massive carp and I just never thought about catching them. And it's really not that, that, that popular down here, to be honest with you. So maybe there's an untapped fishery and I can go out there and, and, and catch them. <laughs> Thank you, Jason Ward. I appreciate that. Yeah, my guests have been great tonight, and I'm going to use that as a tr transition to kind of wrap up. Um, you know, we we were supposed to have Top Tactic on, and you know, he's gonna he's actually said he wants to be on the show, so we'll have him on for a full episode um, as a as a guest. So I know 
I know Marillo will be in there wanting to pick his brain, and I hope everybody else would want to come in and pick his brain. And one other person we uh, I hate that we didn't get in was uh, uh, DC Metro was supposed to come in tonight. Um, so go check their channels out. You know, this live this live YouTube stuff is unpredictable sometimes, and I'm so thankful for the people like Mike and and Chunky and uh, Josh and Norm and everybody who came in tonight that they would carve out just a little bit of their time for me. And some of them have done it several weeks in a row. So y'all, I really appreciate it. And I think you can tell by all the great comments and, and uh, the super chats and the, and the number of people that have been in here, which has dropped off now, but you know, we had over a hundred people in here at one point tonight and it's not because of me. It's because of guests like Mike and Ryan and all you guys, coming out and helping me share our wealth of knowledge with people about fishing. So Mike, thank you. And thank you everybody else who's been on there. Uh, let me go ahead and add Jason Ward up here. Thank you, Jason, for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Um, next, I, I want to do a series on boats, y'all, but uh, I'm not going to guarantee that's going to be next week. Because boats are a little weird, uh, you know, with the time change now and the time my show starts, it's going to be dark, you know, when it, when we come live. And so to have people go out and depend on their Wi-Fi or their or their, um, you know, their cell signal to show us their boats. I'm just going to have to think about it really hard. If anybody's got any ideas, I'm open to ideas. You can email me palmettocats at gmail dot com. I also want to do a kayak fishing episode. Um, I don't want to leave anyone out because I'm learning too. Today with bank fishing, I learned a ton, especially here in the last 20 minutes with Mike at, about carp fishing. I don't know anything about that. So um, if you have any ideas on how we can do a boat night, a kayak night, um, I would really, really appreciate it. Yeah, from the garage, that's good. My boat's not – I don't have a garage for mine, so I'd have to go outside. <laughs> but – um but it, no, we're not talking about noodling. Sorry, one ton. <laughs> he said noodling, LOL. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, boat safety, we can do all of that. So anyway, y'all, thank you. Thank you for the 76 people that are still in here. Thanks to my guests. I'm going to not delay anymore. I'm going to pray us out. Heavenly Father, thank you again for all my wonderful guests. Thank you for this opportunity to come on here and share our love for fishing. Uh, and for the resources that you've given us, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you for all the blessings you've shown me and the people in here. I ask that you would be with them and keep them safe as we all go our separate ways. And uh, Lord, I just ask that you bring them back, not only to my show, but the other shows that are on uh, this week. And, and Lord, I just thank you for the support that this community shows each other. Uh, it surprises me and blesses me every single weekend. And I know that you're behind it, and I want to give you all the credit. Lord, thank you again for a country where we can do this. I'm super blessed to be in America and be able to do this sort of thing without any or little to no, or if any, regulation, Lord. And you've blessed it to be that way. I thank you, and I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Mike. Thanks a lot, man. Absolutely. Thanks, for everybody, for coming out. Um, I'm reading these comments. I'll go back and read them again. But again, if you have if you have suggestions, please email me so I can have them all there and I can look at them and think about them. Uh, Palmetto Cats. Uh, somebody's trying to pop in. Oh, there's DC. DC Metro Angler's about to pop in. Uh, we might say hey to him real quick. What's up, DC? How you doing? So yeah. I can't hear. I can't. There you go. Yeah, we we just prayed and we're about to head out. But hey, man, you just popped in. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to talk if you want. Uh, all right, all right. Can you hear me good? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Uh, I don't know where I should start. Uh, it's some bait fishing tips. Uh, I guess I get on the catfish page. And are we on? All right, Marilla, I'm gonna take you down. All right. We're listening. I think you got a little bit of, of a delay, so if you hear me say anything, I'll try to stay quiet so you can uh, you can go for it. 
understood. Uh, I'll just go throw my go-tos out. I use a, uh, a dropper loop with a six-side circle hook. I use a four-ounce weight on the bottom. And uh, I like to use that because I get accuracy, get distance out of my cast. Uh, I use big baits, especially around this time, this fall season. Uh, a lot of baits moving. Uh, the prime bait of Potomac right now is Alewives and uh, Bunker. You can find uh, Alewives in your area, and you can catch Bunker on Sabiki rigs around moving water. Uh, it's been pretty good right now. And uh, just last night, we caught over over 180 pounds of catfish just going up. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Uh, no no hogs, just uh, a couple mid-20s and a couple 15s. Um Got a bunch of small ones too, but it all added up. Yeah, we just had a lot of fun out there. Just go out there fishing, kill the time. Uh, I think the best bait that produced it, that was the bunker. And we usually don't get bunker in DC. They usually mostly LYs. And it's the first couple times I've seen bunker this year. I've seen it one time, maybe two years ago. They usually don't come up in here, but with uh, the lack of rain, it's a uh, it's salinity is really high, so we get a lot of those coastal fish to come over here. We got big stripers there right now, and uh, like I said, the bunker. And I've uh, seen some uh, some other fish that we couldn't identify just yet. It's a uh, from all the bait on uh, the bait side of basically. I got you. Fishing. And um, all the other species, crappy fishing is picking up. Uh, I love crappy fishing out just using tandem tandem jigs, two inch jigs, catching a bunch of crappy uh, white perch is still in. And the fishing just do you eat the catfish that you catch? Uh, I do eat the catfish that I catch, but I do regulate it on our waters because our waters is not the cleanest, even though it's getting better. Uh, the catfish I keep are usually under seven pounds and only keep a few of them, just maybe five, six, just to get me through the week. Um, the big ones, I definitely recommend stay away from the big ones because uh, we do have a lot of chemicals in the water. PCBs is uh, the most, it's the most abundant and you know, this catfish range I probably stay away from is anything over 10 pounds, and 10 pounds is pushing it for me. Like I said, I keep it gotcha. up to seven. Uh, the crappy, do you use, crappy, do you use surf know. rods? I do use surf rods, yes. I use a 10 foot. I have Sentinel, I forgot the name, but I just bought them this year. <laughs> but uh, okay, Continental, yes, Continental uh, from Central. It's a uh, 10 foot poles, it comes with a combo, it's a nice reel, one ball bearing reel. Comes with 15 pound test, but I'll change it out. I use braid. I got 40 pounds braid with that 30 pound leader, and like I said, I use a dropper, a dropper loop rig. A lot of people like to use loop rig. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, any any more questions? I can throw something out. Like, uh, I mean, no, not really. We covered a lot tonight. Uh, we had a lot of people in. They talked about lights they use. They talked about. Um, cool gadgets they've come up with, uh, the whack, you know, they use wagons or chairs they use, um, anything, anything interesting that you use that you think maybe is kind of unique to you? Um, let's see. Not, not I know really. you're just getting home and, and I'm putting you on the spot, but <laughs> how about snacks? What kind of snacks <laughs> do you eat out there? Oh, Oh, yo, man, I'm a fat boy when it comes to snacks. All right, here uh, we go. Here we go. All right. <laughs> My number one, I had to have Black Forest gummy worms. They're like the best. They made with real juices. So, like, I'm really picking on that. Plus, I'm back to some tournament. So, my snacks got to be unique. <laughs> so, <basically, laughs> like, all that's out of question. All the chocolate is out of question. So, I go with mostly gummies. Uh, I got a lot of. 7 like where I, where I fish around. So I usually go to stop in there and get some wings, some chips, sodas. You know, just bundle Ooh, up. Just, wings, huh? Oh yeah. It, it have you ever up. used the have you ever used the chicken wing bone for a bait? I have. It, it has worked. <laughs> I've uh, actually so, seen So not fish. only do you have dinner, but then you have some bait after you have dinner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a lot of oil. <laughs> <laughs> 7-Eleven has some amazing gummies. <laughs> I didn't know that. I have to check them out. What kind of soda do you drink out there? Uh, actually, I don't drink much soda. I kind of like straight, straight healthy with me. But I do, uh, if I do drink soda, I'm going with uh, more of the light, light part of soda, not the dark ones, like Coke, Pepsi. So I'm like Sprite, Canada Dry, 
anything that's not going to weigh me down. So what do you drink uh, that's healthy out there? Uh, I use natural juices, like Welch's. Okay. Uh, big, big orange. I would get like, the biggest bottle I probably see in there. And sometimes I just go up a um, kid's pantry and distill some of the Capri Suns. Got you. <laughs> Where's my Capri Sun? I don't know. Right. Yeah. I have to ask You're looking for me. <laughs> so something that we hadn't, you seem like a man that's not afraid to talk about this. Some people have mentioned it in passing, but uh, you know, bank fishermen is kind of this had suffered from a little problem that uh you know boat fishermen suffer from too, is where do we go to the bathroom? Oh, and yeah. what do you bring? What do you bring to help that? Well, see, they got I uh, fish in the city, and there's a bunch of hotels around, and they have no problem. They know me by face now. I go in there, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're really, really nice to me because, uh, you know, I'm there. It just Sometimes I promote them on the channel. Like gotcha. um, Marriott. Marriott. This is Marriott uh, Walmart Park. I fish next to uh, it's a spot of fish. That's just both house, and they're the closest hotel. And like, I cater for them, and they don't be my face now. So, I mean, we're, <laughs> yeah. awesome. Have you ever tried beef jerky for bait? Um, I have tried beef jerky, and I'm very it, but now it I, I use it. Well, uh, yeah, yep. But if I use beef jerky, I'm probably going to use it for bait fishing. Like I catch bluegills, uh, white perch, and a lot. Awesome. Hey, DC, I, I really appreciate you, uh, you know coming in and i know you you got home late and i just yeah. really appreciate your time man hey man anytime man and maybe maybe one of these weekends uh soon we'll have you on for a full episode you can talk about your channel we can ask you get to know you a little better and uh you know get you some more views and just talk about you in general if you're up for that yeah, yeah you know, i'm always down spill some secrets <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah, man. man cool well hey man god bless you have a good night hey. Thanks for having me, man. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. All right, y'all. Well, you saw it. DC Metro, we had him in here. If you haven't checked out his channel, he's got a really good channel. Uh, uh, yeah, he does have a really smooth uh, voice, doesn't he? Um, Chunky talks about him all the time. Go check out DC Metro Angler on YouTube. And, y'all, it's late. It's almost 10 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, I got to work tomorrow. I'm sure several of you have to work tomorrow. So I've already prayed us out. But thank you for everybody that came on. Thank you for the awesome comments and the support that you've shown me these past few weeks. I uh, hope to see you every weekend. And until then, happy fishing.